Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sasquatch Outpost podcast. This is season two, episode 57. I'm glad to have everyone here. Thanks for everyone who's in on the chats, uh, our, our faithful followers. We really appreciate it. Good to have you here, Wayne, and, uh, and everyone else who's in the chat room. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. We hope you'll enjoy it, and we hope that you will choose to subscribe. Uh, we're trying to push for 9,000 subscribers now for the network. Um, you know, it's funny with YouTube, they, they choose to push you forward or not, uh, whatever your program is or your, or your network. And, and they've chosen for now not to push our network forward a great deal, but they're just starting to do that. And so I think once we cross over uh, 9,000, 10,000, they'll start pushing us a lot uh, heavier and we'll get a lot more uh, views from our podcasts, which will be awesome. It's kind of an exponential thing. Once you hit a certain mark, everything starts to, to roll in your favor. So we're looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to, to the, our show tonight. Um, Unfortunately, my guest that who was planned, um, Pamela Pierce Barcelou, um, had a family emergency, and I just spoke with her today, and she will not be able to be here. And I, I totally understand she was going to come on anyway. And I said, Pamela, if I were you, I would not want to be trying to be on a podcast tonight. So why don't you take care of your family situation? And we'll rebook you. And she's very eager to to come on as soon as she can do that. So um, her apologies and my apologies. But we have our fan favorite, Jill Herrera, who's going to be with me a little bit later. So and Jill and I have a lot to talk about tonight. But the last couple of days, uh, this last weekend here, we had uh, an unbelievable windstorm uh, Saturday and Sunday. And I don't remember, certainly I'm trying to remember when I've ever been in wind that strong. Power is still out in parts of Bailey, even today on Tuesday. So uh, there were trees down everywhere. There were even power poles that blew down, believe it or not. So it's been an incredible time. But I wasn't at home. I was camping with three buddies, uh, Jason and Lou, who many of you saw on the podcast, and then uh, another friend, Clinton. And um, our original plan was that we were going to go backpack into Goose Creek Canyon. <laughs> I'm so glad we changed our minds. The night before we went out, we talked about it, and we changed our mind because not because of the wind, but because of the ice and snow, we didn't know how much room there would be to camp. 
And so thank God we changed our mind and, and Lou brought his, or Clinton brought his big outfitter tent and Lou brought a wood stove. But just to give you a little taste of <laughs> what this was like last weekend, I, I made a quick video of our time. We'll just show that and, uh, and then we'll talk about it. We decided as a group not to hike down into the canyon because of the ice and snow. So um, this is our <laughs> new accommodations. Great tent, and by the way. Fantastic tent. It took us a little while to put this thing up because it's been blowing a gale. But let me show you a couple things here. Luxury accommodations. We have a bona fide wood stove here that's cranking. It's got the wood stove down here, a cooktop here, and we got Jason. Let me turn this this way. Turn your gamble, gamble. Hey guys. Turn the gamble. So chilly. This is Clint, Hi. Lou back here, Jason, and we're working on some. Are these pork ribs? These are pork ribs, yeah. What did that just do? You just made everybody dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see that chimney sticking up there. The chimney was tied down with three lines. All right, to protect ourselves tonight from the wind. We put our trucks to block the prevailing wind. <laughs> Going home is not an option. Staying no. out here. Can't go home. <laughs> to, Can't concede defeat. Hopefully have the Sasquatch come up to the tent tonight. But we gotta block this wind. This wind is unbelievable. So the first night was bad. The second night was unbelievable. I have never had wind that strong. And throughout the night, because we had this chimney sticking up, if that chimney had gone down, it would have pulled the pipe out of the stove and the stove was lit all night. And so everything that was next to the sides of the tent, we had to pull in those tables because the wind was pushing the side so hard, it was wanting to knock the stove and everything over. But you could hear it coming on the hill behind us, and you'd hear this, and you'd think, oh, no, here comes another one, and boom, it would hit the tent. And I just could not believe that we, we made it through the night, and uh, these other guys were all just snoring away, and I'm like, Am I the only one that's worried about this tent falling down and the guy wires coming out and, you know, but yeah, I don't know what it is about guys and adventure, but, uh, we never thought about coming home. We just thought, how are we going to get these guy wires staked in the ground even harder and then pulled our trucks in front. And if we hadn't had the trucks there, I don't know what would have happened that night, but so it was, I'll tell you what though, the way to camp, if you're going to camp, is in an outfitter tent with a wood stove. Ooh, baby. That was so much nicer than camping on the ground. And if we had been down in the canyon, we had been freezing to death and we wouldn't have been able to have a fire because of the wind. And we had all been hunkered down in our tiny little tents just wishing for morning. So um, we did hear the second night, um, I didn't put this in the video, but we did hear a whistle. We were, we were making dinner. It was starting, it was, dark it was already dark i heard a whistle outside it wasn't the wind and i said did you guys hear that and they said yeah and then jason went out to take care of business and he said when he got about 20 yards from the tent it whistled again and it was coming from down in the ravine below us i went outside with my camera and my flashlight and wandered around for a bit but i didn't i didn't hear anything so could have been something else but uh it sure sounded like a sasquatch when they whistle so i can't say for sure but that's the only thing that happened that 
<laughs> a Sasquatch could have come and been kicking and, and slapping the side of the tent. We would never have known, especially that second night. It was so windy. We would never have known. So, um, yeah, in the end, it wasn't really a squatching trip. It was just uh, a fun time with the guys. And we had some awesome elk steaks the second night. Man. Nothing like elk. I don't, I'm not a big venison guy, but elk, ooh, baby, it's good stuff. So, uh, let's see, what else was I going to go over? Um, so we've got, um, our summer expeditions, um, and let's see, is this the right one? I think, no, not that one. Did I not load it? I thought I loaded it. Um, We've got a, a cave talk this coming Saturday night. So cave talks are our version of TED Talks. We do them in the cave room at, at the Sasquatch Outpost. It seats 25 uh, if it's full, full. And I think we've got 10 people um, registered for this Saturday. We start at 7, so you've got time to go have some dinner in Bailey. And then come join us for the Squatch, for the Cave Talk. During these talks, I, I, I talk about things that um, in my research and things that I don't just normally uh, talk about day to day. So it's a fun time, lots of time for Q&A. Um, so if you're interested and you live in the greater Denver area, please come join us. You can come and pay at the door. Uh, or you can book it online through the Sasquatch Outpost website. And um, uh, hold on a second. Let me just see if I can load this real quick, just because um, uh, it's got, I put a QR code so you guys can see this. Let me just grab this slide. Um, here we go. So as soon as this loads, Steph, you can put it up. Looks like it's loading quick. So uh, amazing. I was able to pull that off, Stephanie, without messing something up. So this Saturday, April 13th, 7 p.m. in the Sasquatch Encounter Cave Room. So um, book it online or or just come and and pay at the door. It's fine. I don't think we'll, we'll have too many people for the seats we have. Uh, you can go down a page here and we've got two kinds of expeditions and Jill and I are going to be talking about this tonight. This is the reason I brought Jill on. We have truck camping, um, which is three days and two nights and horseback camping three days and two nights. And these are, and I've talked about this before, these are we 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 pride ourselves on providing everything that you'll need. So these are all inclusive trips. This is our third or fourth season, Jill. I can't. I think it's our third season. But um, we've had we've had a lot of people. And I was just talking to the Chamber of Commerce uh, this morning here in Bailey and. We've got people that come from around the world, but people not from Bailey. And I, I don't know what that is all about. So I encourage people from Bailey to sign up uh, and see what we do and be a part of these trips. But we we provide everything. We provide your tent, your bed, your bedding, your food, your snacks, your horses, your guides, the equipment to see Sasquatch at night. I mean, we provide everything. You just got to show up with your clothes, basically. So um, so they're not the cheapest uh, camping expeditions you'll ever go on, but we pride ourselves on providing value for what you're paying. So uh, we have a lot of fun, and we've had great reviews. And like I said, we've had people fly in from England and France and, and lots of places. So um, if they can do it, then you guys would enjoy it, I think. Um, top Bigfoot museums on YouTube. Oh, really? I didn't see that YouTube. Wow. 
That's cool. The Sasquatch Outpost at number one. Hey, um, Doug, um, send send Stephanie the actual name of that YouTube so she can put it up. I have not seen that. Uh, that is really cool. I can't remember if I had another slide on there, Steph. I don't. Sh I don't think so. And this is just um, take a picture of that with your phone. You can scan it. Um, this is where you can book for for the things we've talked about and for the night hikes around Bailey. Um, okay. So that being said, uh, oh, the the big conference. I wanted to mention this. Uh, they have changed the pricing somewhat for the big conference in May in Broomfield. So it's $120 for admission plus a raffle ticket plus a very extensive box lunch. If you just want to come with no lunch, it's 75 And if you want to come and just attend with no raffle, the raffle is so that 10, the 10 winners – can have lunch with Jeff Meldrum. That's the whole purpose of that raffle. Uh, for for Daniel and myself, you can have lunch with us for free. So, <laughs> um, but the uh, so uh, that's a little bit more affordable if you just want to come and attend. Fifty dollars, I think, is within most people's budget for a day. So I encourage you to sign up at the big um, on their website. Uh, bigfootinvestigativegroup.com and it should be a fun day. They're going to have a two hour lunch. So lots of time for networking and talking and it should be good. Okay. So because Pamela couldn't make it, I asked Jill last minute. And of course, Jill was always, unless she has to be somewhere else, she's always willing to come join us. And I know you guys love having Jill. So, we're going to bring Jill on, and um, thanks for being with us, Jill. Good to see you Hi. again. Hi, everybody. Thanks for offering me the warm welcome. I appreciate it. <laughs> you bet. And uh, you are you are loved by our followers, Jill. So, um, But well, Jill you. and I realized that we, we haven't really talked about what we want to do this summer. And so we thought, well, let's just first off, um, tell some stories about stuff that's happened in the past when we've had, um, two, it's a two seasons or three, Jill. I'm trying to remember. I think it's two seasons of trips that we've organized together. Yeah. It's two. Um, two seasons. and plus that expedition we organized with the guys into lost <laughs> creek wilderness the one we almost died on <laughs> yes the one we almost died on and the one you um, didn't ever want to go back <laughs> listen we had these guys great guys they were they were filming a, a a documentary and they wanted us to take them into lost creek wilderness and spend a, a night or two and so jill and i had to go scout first find a good spot <laughs> to take them, which was about three and a half miles in from the Rolling Creek trailhead. And how many, how many crossings and, of water? And there were, <laughs> there were five stream crossings going in and the same See? five coming out. And oh, every, I think four out of the five were rock, rocky going down into the stream oh. and rocky coming out and horses hate rocks because they slide their hoofs slide on the rocks. And so <laughs> their tendency is to want to, once they get in to leap out the other side over the rocks. So every single time, and we were both pulling horses, pack horses behind us. So you had to make sure your horse got in and got out <laughs> and the pack horse got in and got out. And, uh, uh -huh. I lost the pack horse at least once. That was my first time Girl, to, yes, to pony horses definitely. and, and she, but she didn't take off. She, she started to run back to the trailers and then she thought, wait a minute, all the other horses are here. Where am I going? So then she came back, but yeah, I mean, I mean, 60 times we crossed those streams <laughs> taking the, we took gear in the first, the first night. Then we had to come out, pick the guys up, pick all their gear up, load it on the horses. We had to hike in at least. I think I hiked in because 
we had to use my horse with pack horse because they had so much stuff. We there was no way we could I ride. Did too. I carried the drone. Don't forget. Oh, that's right. You carried the drone. Oh. So and, and the anyway, whole time, the whole time I thought it was two and a half miles because I for some reason had that in my head. <laughs> Come to find out, it was three and a half. Three and a half. Miles. <laughs> that other mile really counted. So we we went in. We <laughs> did we did the expedition. Lots of stuff happened. <sighs> When we came out, we couldn't get all the gear out in a day. And I was, I have almost never been that tired in my life. The horses had, had rubbing sores on them from the, mm -hmm. from the saddles and from the, the cinches and everyone was sore and we got out and we left a whole bunch of gear in there overnight. Cause we just couldn't get back and Jill and the horses came to our house. And I told Jill that night, why don't we just leave all that gear? I don't care. Let's just leave it. And she's no. like, no, we got to go get nope. the gear. Yep. She really had to push me because I did not want to make that trip back in. And uh, I was using the horses as an excuse. Oh, your horses are tired. And they're nope. sore. So we went in and finally got the rest of it. But when we went back in that last time, oh. and it was just the two of us picking up the that gear, was... those Sasquatch were you could hear them running and whooping and then they, there was all kinds of noise going on back there. They were not happy. They no, were they were not happy. Not happy. And this was daytime when we went yep. back in. So, uh, we knew we didn't want to, we didn't want to go in or out in the dark <laughs> with those horses, not crossing those streams. We didn't, but excuse me. So we made it all those trips in. Nobody got hurt. Um, thank goodness. Nobody fell off the horse. Um, so all, all's well that ends well, but when I've, when I've suggested to Jill, we do that again, she's like, Hmm, I'm not too sure about that. So, but anyway, we, we, um, we have two seasons of mainly horseback camping that we've done together. We're going to do other kind of camping, um, organizing it together this summer as well. But, um, so we we started off two years ago, and we had the very first trip we took. Uh, the only people that signed up were these two uh, gals, and I'd say in their what thirties, maybe something like that. Yeah, thirties. And um, we picked a spot. We we had never camped there. We picked a spot, and Wayne was with us, and. Uh, uh, I was trying to show a video tonight of when we went in and to show you the camp, but uh, my computer loves to take a video and put it into the PowerPoint as a photo. Don't get, don't ask me why. <laughs> so anyway, we went in, set up the camp because the whole point is when you guys arrive, if you're coming with us on one of these trips, you arrive to a fully set up camp. Everything's ready to go. Um, and in the past two years, we would always set up the camp and then we would meet our guests a couple of miles away, maybe three miles away. I don't know. And then they would ride into the camp. They would park out there and we would ride in together. Um, that's the way it was supposed to work most of the time. <laughs> but so we did that that first trip. We got everybody in and got everybody settled and. Um, ice cold beer for them when they got to the camp and, and it was a really good situation, but we had never Wayne and I, the first night we stayed there, Jill and, and, uh, John and David left to go back that night because you had to get the get, horses. Yeah. To get the yeah. horses and, and meet them out, um, at the trail. So nothing happened that first night that Wayne and I remember. And, um, so let's see, I think if we show the rabbit hole slides, um, so this, this tree was in the, the campground and it looks, we thought, man, that looks like a Bigfoot face on that Aspen tree. It does. Maybe it was just a natural, weird phenomenon on the because aspens do have all these black 
marks from when branches grow and fall off. But that look, it looks like a face and it doesn't look like one that was made by people. We didn't think. So it that was have, an interesting thing. Yeah. It didn't have any knife marks on it. It, it had no, no tooling, no. no tool marks on it at all. So no. And so the, we set up our camp kind of around that tree and I had a tent, Wayne had a tent, Jill and John had a tent and then our guests had a tent. So, um, so tell them, let's let, I'll let you take over from here and tell everyone what happened that first night. The only well, night I think we only did a one nighter yeah, that time. We, that one, we, that was our first experiment. <laughs> we didn't know if we could do two nights, but we did one. Mm. Um, so it was a full moon. And the way we that's right, the tents, the moon, um, it completely lit up your tent. And anybody that walked by behind your tent between the moon and your tent would cast a shadow on your tent. I mean, it was like daylight. Yeah. It, you could yeah. see. And um, so when night came, um, those guys stayed up around the fire for probably about another hour. And Until it was about around, 10 or 1030. Yeah, maybe. yeah, it was around 10 or 11. And, uh, I had gotten out and checked on the horses several times. And, um, I noticed that I was getting little rocks and twigs and sticks <laughs> thrown at me. And I was thinking, well, that's kind of weird. And I'm okay. Squirrel. I, I mean, it, nothing but it's, hit. it's middle of the night, right? It so. is the middle of the night. I didn't see any squirrels. So, around there. so you said <laughs> these, these things would come like dink, and land <laughs> yeah, okay, next but, to you or hit a tree next yep, to you. Yep. And a couple of them bounced off the tent. And then um, uh, then I checked on the horses. Everybody was good. And I, and I climbed back in the tent. So um, it was immediately yeah. at the last zipper. So the last person in their tent, the zipper closed. And all of a sudden, all heck broke loose. You could hear like little kids. You it know, was like bigger. little kids. You could hear them, and, and, and that's something too. It's aspen, so there was a lot. It was springtime, and there was a lot of dead um, leaves from fall. And there, there had been no rain yet up to no that rain, point. And the trees had started to green out. It was really pretty. And um, there was no wind, nothing you know, no. to, that would make the leaves rustle. But it sounded like a herd <laughs> of kindergartners running through our camp. I mean, Ran, they And they were just around. running around. Around yeah, the camp, running around the tents, <laughs> running through the camp, <laughs> jumping over logs. Um, and do you think I stuck my head out to see what was out there? No. <laughs> anyway, um, so well, then, let me let me interject here that when I when I first heard that, I thought, <laughs> no way, one, no way that anything is running on these crunchy <laughs> leaves running. and running around the camp and then going back the other way. And so I thought it must be the must horses be the horses. Don't. So I, I unzip and I shine my light out there and I'm looking at the horses and they look at me like, what? You know, they weren't yep. doing anything. Now okay. they would, we made the mistake of, of tying them <laughs> next to a couple of aspen trees and Darn. they would, they would eat those trees at night. <laughs> Sound like somebody eating really crunchy, crunchy cookies. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not that what we were hearing. It was no. leaves. So. No. And, and I switched him around. I, I got Star away from the tree so she wouldn't eat it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she I had eaten rangers. she had eaten a bunch of that tree by the next morning. It was crazy. I didn't want the rangers to get us. So. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So then it quiets down. And I'm thinking, But it went like an hour, hour and a half. Oh, I mean, they didn't stop running. It was incredible. No, and, and it finally quieted down. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm still awake because I'm listening to the horses. And um, I across my tent walks a Bigfoot, just, just like you're cut out. I mean, it, it was, and I, the only bad thing is it was huge. Cause it went all the way up the side of my tent and all the way across the top of the tent. And I could see the shadow. Bigfoot. You mean? Yeah. Walking yeah. across. And, um, it was like daylight out there. And I thought, yeah, but how big is it? Is the, like a little one in the, in the, sh in the moon's throwing the shadow on the tent and make it look huge. Right. You know, because a squirrel can look like a monster. In the, <laughs> in the Especially daylight. when you're <laughs> when you're afraid and you're in your tent by yourself. But I'm like, and you can hear it walking. 
Now, Wayne could hear it. And he, I think he also he said, felt he it. He said, it. did he feel it? Okay. I don't know if he yeah. can see it across. He can confirm head. that through the chat, but I, he said he, he heard it and felt it like boom, boom, yeah. boom. It, it, it was like, <laughs> it was like a vibration, like, <laughs> like King Kong in those Chinese Japanese movies, you know, where they, they walk across and the ground shakes and everybody screams and runs. So I'm like really quiet. Cause I'm thinking. Holy cow. And then um, there was a screaming, uh, uh, like, I can't even describe it. It was horrifying. It was not <laughs> like, a lion. It was not a lion. It was scary. And I was going, <clears throat> Jim, Jim, are you awake? <laughs> you were out. Wayne was awake. He goes, I heard it. I heard it. I'm like, okay. And so that, that went Was that when the us. horses went berserk? Oh, no, Th that first screen, it, 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 they didn't do anything. But a little bit later, it screamed really loud. And when it did that, two of my horses, and I don't know how they did this, because <laughs> one's short and one's tall, but I think because of that, they they flipped over, one went over the top of the other one, and the other one went underneath the other one. So, because when I got up, they were tangled, and I was- It like, was just <laughs> dust, and noise, and Yeah. <laughs> So I'm out there in my socks as normal <laughs> and um, I'm trying to untangle them. Little branches are flying by my head and rocks again. Anyway, and my heart's going hundred miles an hour. Um, I woke uh, John up and he went out with me. So I wasn't by myself this time. And, uh, and we got them untangled and I separated them. I put a tree between them because I thought I, I have no explanation. Hmm. So then we got back in the tent and then Oh, an hour went by and that shadow went back the way it came. And it was as huge as it was when it came the first time. And I was like, could not believe that. So then it, there was just, and then there was more running and tree trees cracking and, and not. It was a and, really busy night. Really busy. <laughs> it was horrible. And then about daylight, I thought, okay, I can sleep from, because it's daylight <laughs> now. I can sleep from about 4.30 until 6. And um, because I was awake most of the night, and so I was just about to go to sleep, and I don't know what that scream meant, but if I was those other Sasquatches, I would have gone wherever that scream told me. It was it let out a scream, and the horses spooked on that one. Um, they all jumped, and and then that's when remember Estraita was going. <laughs> oh, that's right. She. she... <laughs> He was looking into the dark away from the camp. Camp's back here. She's looking this way and she's telling him, she's like, <laughs> come, come in here, come in here. Yeah. And I'm going, shut up. Shut God. up. <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> anyway, that was. Um, and she only does that with humans, right? Yeah. She only, well, she does that with things that walk upright. Um, <laughs> well, raw, walk upright. Time, correct. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But I never stuck my head out. Did you Wayne? <laughs> see what that was no i did not anyway i didn't want to see what it was i could see the shadow so um i was tired and ready to yeah. go home when we, when we left so but the next morning i interviewed these two ladies so let's just show that interview and see what they thought <laughs> of that night so um, how have you enjoyed this expedition so far oh this it's been amazing yeah it's fun it's been really awesome <laughs> what have you enjoyed about it um company has really made it quite lovely. Of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> oh, you get brownie points for saying that. <laughs> that always makes it better. Um, just kind of the camaraderie of listening and yeah. finding and tracking. How was the ride in yesterday? Gorgeous. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. If it was any longer, I might have been sore, but it was just right. It's perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> we know? get another ride out today. Yeah. It will be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I loved um, the horseback riding in part. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I've never like horseback ridden camped combo. Yeah. yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then, having really a Guinness cool. when you got here was okay too. It's perfect. It was perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, then last night. And what about last night? What did yeah. you, what did you ladies hear? Oh, um, all the like walking around, the stomping rocks being thrown it was weird yeah it was so a lot of activity we went in the tent it was like probably like 10 30 yeah, or so yeah. and we'd been laying there for maybe like 15 minutes or so and i, I started hearing like like this like knocking but like one knock at a time and then 
but it was like happening pretty like close together a bunch of them and right after that like while that was happening then i all of a sudden heard like those like running footsteps like, ching, 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 through the leaves. it was like yeah you know like <laughs> yeah and, and it went on i thought it was the horses and... i did too <laughs> And it yeah, wasn't them, they were just standing there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sounded like it was coming like from that kind of side. I, I heard them all but... around running. Yeah, they'd be right next to the tent. I can hear them like right outside. It got me all nervous. Yeah, well, but I was like, oh, but I, I don't know. It must be the sound carrying weird from the yeah. horses. And... Did you hear the scream this morning early? I, I did not. not. I didn't no. either. We were knocked out. <laughs> I woke up right. I had some weird dreams, so I kept thinking I'll like... I'll bet. Yeah. <laughs> the... will do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> but I wonder if you were camping and you weren't here with us squatching, what you would have thought those sounds were. Well, if I didn't have horses deer. with me to yeah. like, you know, blame it on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be scared. I'd be back in the car maybe. Yeah. Yeah, back in the car. <laughs> okay, I'm sleeping in the car. The sleeping with the bear spray in my hand. <laughs> That's like... right. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it so far. Yes, so. thank you. Yeah. You bet. Thanks for taking us out here. It's been awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, it has been. So write us a review, please. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> yeah, they were good sports. Um, that was definitely one of the busiest nights we had on any of the trips. But oh, yes, it was. Because we went, we went back there again with some other guys, and and it was a very quiet night. So yeah, you know, those guys were. Uh, I don't know. They they weren't. They weren't really into squatching. I no, think. no, they weren't. They so, were there to make a video for their YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, which was fine, but they definitely were not, they were not into Sasquatch. So, um, whether that's a, a, a relationship to what happens or not, nothing really, nothing really happened. Did anybody go out to look for Sasquatch? I did not. Um, I did. I did. Wow. During the eclipse? Yeah. Not I was out there um, during the daytime, and then I went out that night at about eight o'clock. So interesting. So um, anything unusual? No, nope, because it of the was eclipse. Dead quiet. No birds. No. It, it was quiet. I was the only one out there. I think. <laughs> I mean, eclipses have produced a lot of uh, bizarre. Um, where was the camp out? The camp yeah. out. Ah. Uh, you can tell them better than I can because it's it, closer it, to you. It was National Forest, and it was in a, up an old creek, an old mining creek. And um, really, the only people that ever go up there, once in a while, some ATVers will go up there. The road is horrible. It is horrible. <laughs> it is bad. You got to have four wheel drive, and you better know how to how to straddle boulders because there's lots of them. And but, you um, could you could almost eleven mile reservoir was just the other side of the hill from us so it was about we went up that road about nine miles um and it was nine miles of two miles an hour <laughs> nine miles of you know every mile yeah. you drove so so the people that get go up there are dyed in the wool camper uh, uh hunters and so they make yeah. hunting camps up there and that's um right in uh, pikes national forest and it was amazing mm -hmm. and because w without the hunters there you got it all to yourself I mean, yeah. there's some, once in a while, there'll be a rancher that'll run some cows up there, but, um, they haven't run cows in a couple of years. So, and yeah, it's very quiet stream. usually. Yeah. There was a stream right by us so we could get water for the horses. It was really nice. So, so let's see. Um, this next slide was an experiment we tried. So my <laughs> friend, Doug Highcheck has this theory that Sasquatch is attracted to blue, the color blue. So we, the next, one of the next trips we did to a different location, we had these blue things and we put them out outside the camp little ways. And if I remember nothing, nothing happened, but, um, and we put those strips of uh, Velcro there with the idea that if they, if they grab this plate or this water bottle, they might have some hair that sticks on the Velcro and would pull away from them. It didn't happen. Hey, it was a good idea. Hey, it was worth, worth a try. Um, so we're always trying stuff and everything doesn't work. So these, this was one of the trips. Um, this, the, the horse on the left is Plancha, I think. 
the one on the right, the white one is Maverick, who died after he was struck by lightning. Lightning, yeah. Very sad. So Jill's got great horses. Uh, for those who've never been out with us, it's easier if you've had some experience riding. Um, and we make you sign a whole plethora of forms. <laughs> but well, go ahead, the Jill. Neat thing, the neat thing is, you know, I, I could have horses that um, <clears throat> that would just haul butt and you could run to your right. heart content. But that's not good for beginners. I mean, these no. guys are well-trained. They're not going to bolt and run with you um, even no. in emergency situations. So they're safe horses. Um, you can't, I can't give 100% uh, guarantee on any animal because they're right. an animal. So, I mean, you have to have some little tiny bit of control on them. But um, <laughs> they'll do, they'll just, they're great. They, they don't have to be one right on top of each other. You can kind of spread out a little bit. But this, um, this next season, the one coming up, the thing that's exciting about it is we're going to be able to hit trailheads. So we don't have to stay yeah. around, you know, because we're going to camp here in the property. And, and the reason for that was the hopes that since I have so much activity that um, right. that they'll feel comfortable with people here, which because I'm here all the time and we always have everybody here. And um, you'd think they were the best way to search for Bigfoot. But the horses are really good for Bigfoot because you'll hear them. But you have yeah. to pay attention. If you hear a whistle in the woods, I don't know of too many people that are standing out in the woods whistling. Um, you know, but your horses, your horses are used to Sasquatch because they come on your property all the time. Yeah, they they do. So um, your horses don't react to just the fact that Sasquatch is around. Um, well, they'll they'll okay. So when they stop and start looking into the forest, especially when we're on a forest trail. Yeah, uh, my daughter and I have tried to. Uh, find trails for us to ride and we'll be riding through the forest and they'll just kind of like stop and start looking you need to pay attention because there's some they're looking at something mm -hmm. um either yeah. something that we can't see with our eyes in a different um ir or, or 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 ultra what is it ultraviolet or they can see differently than we do so they can see things better and you gotta think there's wild animals out there too so you need to pay attention and see let's just stop take our time mm -hmm. see what we hear listen um see what you see now most of the time if it's a mountain lion or a bear um the horses will tell you in about yeah five minutes, they'll let five you know seconds. they'll start getting <laughs> excited about it and we'll get everybody off and get, yeah you know get away from there but um yeah remember that one trip we were coming out with those guys that nothing happened to and there was a bear in the tree remember it, was, it went up the tree it was a cub um, as we were going out, do you remember that? They were flying I, their drone. They I must don't. have scared it. Yeah, they scared oh, it out yeah. of the forest and the cub ran up the tree. And so we got the heck out of there because mama's got to be around somewhere. Sure. So. But we, it, to to give you an idea, I've I've been thrown multiple times by horses, but never by Jill's horses. And in fact, the only reason I came off, I came off Maverick one time. <laughs> And the reason I did was Jill and I were scouting and it was just two of us. And so we came to this grove of trees and Jill wisely goes around. And I thought, ah, I think I can fit under that tree. <laughs> well, I could, but my backpack couldn't. So, nope. so Maverick follows where I want him to go. And we go under the tree and then the branch catches my backpack and <laughs> drug me off the back with the saddle. So me and the saddle go sliding off the, his rump and, <laughs> The horse that I used to own, Hunter, would have freaked out. He would have kicked me probably with that saddle sliding off his rump. Maverick, Maverick just <laughs> looks back at me like, "What are you doing?" He yeah. just stopped. He didn't go anywhere yeah. no, until I could get up and get the saddle back on him. And <laughs> the saddle was upside down. Under, it was under his stomach. <laughs> so Jill's like, so all she hears is "Whoa, whoa!" Ooh, when I hit the ground, and she goes, "Are you okay?" And I said, "Yeah, it's just my pride." Um, <laughs> But so her, her horses are, are great. Um, no, you don't need to worry about that, it, especially if you've got a little bit of experience, but. Right. And we're not yeehaw. We're not going to yeehaw. We're going to go down. We're the not yeehaw. Yeah. We, um, we are looking for evidence. We're, we're enjoying the, the ride. We're looking for uh, tree structures and yeah. I mean, you never know what's going to, what you're going to. So find. we got a few more slides here. I think uh, other pictures of when we're out, this was, um, 
we visited the campsite where everything had happened. This is, I think, when we got there and we were taking them off the horses. Um, keep going. Now, one year we went out. Um, we made a mistake of going out the first week of hunting season. That's why they're wearing, we had people wear orange and, uh, we had gunshots all around us. Um, so that was not a good plan. Um, but we did get that UFO that we did, we did. And I think I've got pictures of that. So, oh, this is a French couple that, that particular trip. We had a French couple, a guy flew in from Britain. Yep. Um, we had, it was really a fun group. We had a lot of fun. Um, but here's, so I'm, you can tell your side, I'm in my, in the tent, taking a nap. They're all out there talking. (laughs) So So you tell, tell, tell them how you guys saw this thing. So the, the English guy, he was so cool. He was so nice. And he said, boy, if I could just live in the United States, I'd just stay here, but I can't get a visa. Yeah. He was great. Until I do, I can just visit. So we were talking, I said, well, tell me about England. So we're talking about England. He goes, I said, do you guys have any mysterious things that happened to you in England? He goes, well, one time my girlfriend and I, we were walking down the, um, they were in London and it was hard to see. And it, and, and it was getting dusk, but the, it was um, just about like what you see in the pictures. And he said, it's really kind of hard to see anything because at nighttime, the, the lights are so bright. He said, but we were kind of in an, an out, outer area of London and it was a park. And so we're walking through the park and all of a sudden she said, oh, look, hun, there's a UFO. <laughs> and he goes, just like that one right there. <laughs> Literally, he looks up. <laughs> We look up and there's, there's this UFO and, uh, it was amazing. And just by chance, um, we had a telescope, um, in camp, we were going to look at stars and stuff. And then you had a spotting scope, I think. Well, I had, I had binoculars. So the next, the next slide is what I could see through my binoculars. Amazing. That so it, it had light. It was, it was lit on the outside. It had lights underneath it. And it just sat there yeah. in one yeah. spot in the sky, didn't move for like an hour and a half. We watched it and it, okay. maybe it was there all day. I don't know. But um, so. as, as the sun started to set, it started to change colors and it just slowly moved off to the east and then disappeared. We couldn't see disappeared. it. But oh, it, and at the same time that we spotted that. Um, so it's were, not just Sasquatch. A, no, but there was a whole formation of fighter jets that came that like went right over the top of it. So do you remember that? I don't, but Oh, Oh yeah. We knew that it was lower because the jets were flying above it. They flew above it. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. Who knows what that was, but it, it just sat there and how something metallic can just sit in the sky in one place and not move. I, that was the weirdest thing. So I don't know what it was looking at. If it was looking at us, if it was looking at the hunters, I don't know, but, um, yeah. So when you said you had lots of wind on your trip, do you remember the wind? Oh yeah. Before when we set up camp, (laughs) we tied the tents to the trucks. We did. We did because the tents were starting to roll away. Big, our big tents were rolling away. We're like, ah, catch them, catch them. But we, we tied them to the truck and then about 10 or 10 30 that night the wind stopped and tell them what happened at that oh, point so so had you dozed off i think you dozed off i had dozed off um a- anyway and so um it was dead quiet and i was like i could hear walking on the i could hear footsteps in the grass the dry grass you could hear crunch and then you'd hear crunch and i thought Oh, I must be hearing things anyway, because of the wind was blowing so hard. Maybe my ears, I can't hear anything. So then I, <laughs> there was a trip, the one that we went on and we did 60 trips and I had actually scooted up um, to the top of the tent. And um, Jim had warned me that they like, that the Bigfoot likes to come up next to your tent and touch your head. Well, or any spirit, part of you that's touching or the any tent. part of you that's against the tent. So it was a little a dome tent, a, like a two person dome tent. I had nowhere to go. So anyway, I tried to curl up and stay away from the sides, but during the night I stretched out and my head was against the tent and this thing reached and was touching the back of my head. And it just instinctively, I just reached back and went, and I touched, I touched its fingers. I actually 
ran my hand across these huge fingers, huge. And, uh, and I was like, holy cow, I was out of that tent in like five seconds flat. <laughs> but um, everybody was asleep. I was the only one. Up, and the horses were looking at me. But um, anyway, I remembered that. So when the wind was blowing, I moved my... <laughs> I moved you moved away from the side of the tent so it couldn't touch me or grab my um my cot and so he's asleep and it's dead quiet and i'm watching the tent i'd heard the noise the footsteps and i thought well, i don't know maybe just hearing things but because it's so quiet now and then the tent only my side and only down by my feet came in about three feet <laughs> to try to touch me and i was like uh -uh. Oh, come on, Jill. You're just nope. imagining that. <laughs> nope. Because I looked at the all the other walls and there was no other movement. I was like, nope, not having that. And then I woke you up. Jim, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> wake up. There's something out there. And the tent went back and that was the only thing we really had. Other but than then the wind, as soon as, and the wind just kind of magically stopped oh, at like strange. 10 p.m., 1030 p.m. And as soon as it stopped, we both hear this. Oh, the growl. This That's long wild. growl right yeah. outside the tent. Yep. And I thought, what was what that? Was that was that? not a mountain lion. Nope. I don't think it was a bear. And it <laughs> and it did it. As soon as the noise of the wind stopped, it let out this long growl. So I, and I didn't get zapped, Jeff. I I uh nope, nope. nope I've only nope. been zapped once. <laughs> so you know, but just, in that in that camp was where I think it was the second night we were there. Yeah. And I got up to to oh, yeah, the use, horses. go to the restroom and I see Maverick. So when we tie the horses on the line, the knot we use when the horse pulls against it, it tightens on that yeah. rope. So they can't get off if we tied the, the knots right. So I get up and Maverick is over there grazing dragging his rope behind him. And I thought, how did he get off the rope? So I go grab him and these horses are great. They never run away. They were just grazing. So I grab him, pull him, tie him back up, go back to bed. And then I'm thinking, okay, I, that doesn't make sense that he got off. So then about an hour later, I look out and <laughs> another horse, not only is he off, but his, his halter is hanging on the rope and he's naked out there grazing. I'm like, there's no off. way peanut nope. got off of that line by himself. Cause I checked so, every single halter before I go to something, bed. Something came and untied yep. the halter and let him loose. He didn't make a noise. Maverick didn't make a noise. Mm -mm. So now I'm, now I know what's going on. So I go and I grab peanut, bring him, tie him up. And then I said out loud, okay, I'm trying to sleep. Would you cut it out? And they <laughs> didn't do anything else that night. So, but they let off to the, they didn't hurt them. They just let them off the rope. I think they got their jollies my, messing with That was with my us. fear. I didn't want the horses to run off. But, you know, I should know better because they're they're a group. They're going to stay right there. The, it, yeah. They'd yeah. have to let Star off the line for them to take off. So. Right. And I don't think she'd go anywhere. So. So but, all these things we would have happen when we were when we were out in National Forest. But that's nothing compared to what happens on Jill's property. And that's why and this that, year we changed our plan. Right. And that's what I was going to say to Jeff. Um, I've only been zapped once and it was on my property. And, you know, I don't know if you guys watched the last podcast with the, um, the uh, Alaskan that had such a terrifying um, red roll. Yeah. Oh my God. Encounter with the, with the yes. Sasquatch up there. So my first encounter, when I, when I first saw him, I felt like that. I mean, <laughs> I felt like my world, I was going to die. I told my husband, we're selling the place. I'm going moving into a city in an apartment on the 31st floor. And that's the end of that. Because they're going to eat you, right? Oh, it, 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 you're not ready to see their face and look them in the eye. You just, I don't know what prepares you for that. But now that I've lived here with them for 12 years, um, with all the shenanigans and everything. Um, the other day I saw one moving through the woods and I was I'm good with it. Um, I don't know how close I, I can be. I'll find out something. <clears throat> yes, but here's what I did. My kids were, nobody believes you when you first tell them that you've seen a Bigfoot. <laughs> so my kids were telling me that I'm, you know, crazy. And I'm like, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm retired law enforcement. I'm, I, 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 everything was black and white. I mean, 
I learned everything in the science books. I'm, I'm not a crazy person. Um, and so it was really hard for me. And there was a <coughs> Bigfoot out there in the pasture. And I said, you know what? I was no longer afraid. I just wanted to prove that I wasn't crazy. And I thought, there's only one way I can prove it. I got to get, <laughs> I got to get a handful of hair. Only so, you, only you would come up with this solution, Jill. No, well, you know, <laughs> I'm already crazy lady. So what, what do I have to lose? So I thought, I'm going to sneak out there and I made Joseph, my grandson go with me, but he stopped at the fence. He wouldn't go any farther. So he was about 200 yards away from it. And I thought, <laughs> Nope, I'm getting me some hair. So I, I crept up on it, you know, and it stayed there and I just would take a step and I would take a step and it was still there and it was still there. And I thought, okay, <laughs> no, I'm not going to ride him. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get, yeah. <laughs> get a handful of hair. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to get close enough to grab onto it and get hair. I didn't have any other thought in my head, which it goes to show you how, um, how fixated a, a, a squatcher can become to prove that I'm not crazy. So I thought, okay, I'm within about, I'm within about 50 yards. I think I can, I think I can run and I can, I think I can catch it. <laughs> <laughs> so I take off running just as fast as I can. I'm at a full run and, uh, and I'm not a, track runner or anything but i i could run anyway um so i'm running as hard as i can at this thing and it zapped me and what it did, what it did when it zapped me is i remember seeing the sasquatch then i saw stars then i saw ground then i saw stars and i landed <laughs> flat on my back now i did not Yikes. trip because if i tripped i'd have just gone head first into the dirt but um anyway yeah jeff so i uh, don't get zapped by them that's not fun so anyway because i sat there for about and Joseph thought it was hysterical, um, but I was there for about two minutes with no air in my lungs. So how many how many times have you gone running after him since then? That was it. Um, <laughs> I didn't know they could zap you. I mean, yeah, here's no, the thing. That, to that your credit, had, you wouldn't have I known so that. I feel so bad for the guy in Alaska because he had such a horrifying. Yeah. Uh, but my my experiences with these guys hasn't been that way. They've been really kind. They've been um, patient with me, <laughs> except for the zap. Um, they let me see them now. Um, not now, don't get me wrong. It's not like I see them face to face, but, um, it's, once in a while they'll peek in the windows and you'll see a shadow go by the window, but, um, or the other night they slapped the house again. So, um, but we've anyway, seen, you see, I glow all the time, all the time. Um, and that, the, that's the best I hope to show yeah. the people when they yeah. come out here, I, they, they <clears throat> let me go to a certain um, uh, clearing and we'll go without anything major in our hands or anything. So they can see we're there just standing and they come to us. And the last time we had one, two, three, and two over on the side, we had five of them and they were chattering and talking to each other. Mm. And um, my grandkids got to see it and my daughter got to see them. And um, it was really cool. And I hope for that experience because I don't really think you guys are ready for a face-to-face. -face. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you want one, but. Um, but anyway. we do think that being on her property, there's a lot more chance of seeing their eye glow, of having them come to the, uh, around the tents at night because yeah. they're comfortable. They're comfortable yeah. with Jill and the family. Yep. And, uh, and the best eye glow I've ever filmed was on Jill's property with yeah. her son, John. And you can see his pupils, you can see everything. I mean, so yeah. they'll come right up to the tent area. They'll, they'll, um, he, I don't know Wayne, Wayne camped out there and I don't know if he had really any major, I think he just had noises and maybe some eye glow. And, um, I don't know, Wayne, what'd you, did you, did you see anything shadows or are you there? Wayne? Yeah. I'm sure he's <laughs> writing something, but he's probably typing. Yeah. Um, so. While, while Wayne's replying, the other thing that happens, let's show them these few other slides. They love braiding her horse's manes. Oh, yep. And these are recent, recent braids. Nothing really. Yeah, I, I didn't think anything happened when you were out there that time, Wayne. But um, you, the, what's interesting about a braid, there ha I've lived in the desert. And so the horses used to get what we call wind rolls, where the wind blows their mane. And it, what it does is it just curls it in a giant curl. It's like, <clears throat> like a spiral just spiraled spiral spiral you'll notice on this there's a loop at the bottom of the braid if it's been braided by a sasquatch they always loop the end and braid it back up into the braid 
and it's not a perfect braid, but it is definitely usually three strands of hair mm -hmm. into it, but they always put that signature loop on there. And even if it was the wind, if you don't believe that it was a braid, the wind cannot, to my knowledge, <laughs> tie a knot. Well, and, and it can't make that loop and loop the braid mm -hmm. back up into itself. So show them, um, I think we got three pictures. This is her yeah, newest that's, horse. That that's a quite a braid. Yeah. And there's a third section too. That's the one we're going to cut off when you come yeah. Sunday. So um, orbs, I have tons of orbs. Um, that's another one. Um, and you can see the three, there's three strands that lead into that. And if you could um, enlarge that, it's you'll see a loop and it's the braid is looped back up into itself again. Um, but we get lots of uh, eye glow, not shine, because mm -hmm. we're not shining lights in their faces or anything. We're going to be out there walking around in the dark. <laughs> and um, yeah, and we have much more success with that. You'll hear them. They've been <clears throat> vocal lately. They've been screaming and hollering and making <laughs> noises. And uh, we've gotten lots of orbs in the past. Yeah. You know, and I got That's... that handprint. I don't know if you got that or not. It oh, um, while, while you're showing, let's show the, these videos of the orbs. And this is okay. recent too, right? Yeah. And, and this is off of an ADT camera. I mean, you know, so I, I can't mess with it. It's and now, it goes, is it a double orb or is that a reflection? It's a double, I, it's a double orb, but that it could be one and maybe with the lens, but you can see it come back and then it zips off. Um, that was at one twenty one. And it's funny, you always get these little streaks with it too. Well, we don't have any insects out here right now. It's 20 degrees at night. So uh, I don't know, you know, people see that little zip. And then you see, I think this is the next one or it's way out there. And it like almost comes right up and looks at the camera. There, it looks at the camera and then it takes off. I think that was the same one. But, and then it goes back in the forest and it's gone. So it's not a, I've gotten uh, spiders on the lenses, but you can see their legs and, and you know, you'll see one leg and you'll wonder what that is. And then pretty soon the spider comes into view. These are the no weirdest spiders. things. It's 20 degrees out there, you guys, 20 degrees. And it's just like, it comes up to the light yeah. and looks. sits there, looks at the camera and then it goes away. Yep. It's almost and, like um, they're, they're, What's the word? Uh, um, sentient. They they know they they have intelligence. I mean, it's bizarre. Yeah. And um, anyway, so we get orbs all the time. Those are fun. Um, Ash and I have followed them. <laughs> My daughter. Um, we were out by the campfire. No, I haven't seen I haven't seen orbs and then a sasquatch. I usually see the orbs and then no sasquatch and then a. I might see him in a couple of days, but we mm. were sitting around the fire and these orbs came and she was like, let's follow them. And, and I've read uh, some of the um, Indian um, uh, folklore on orbs and they say, don't follow them and don't touch them. <laughs> well, we didn't know that anyway. So we jumped up from the campfire and we, we traipsed, we kept following them and they kept taking us farther and farther and farther <laughs> into the forest. Yeah. And I finally, I told Ashlyn, uh, this is as far as I'm going. We need to go back. So we went back to the campfire. We no, I think off. that was a wise, a yeah, wise I move. Think it was too. So. Um, let me see if I can. Let me think how I can do this photo. Um, because it does. It's very. I mean, I. It looks like a handprint. Um, I'm gonna send this to you, Stephanie, and let you show us how we can open it so this was i'm just um, going to forward this to you probably um probably four or five days after we got that four and a half foot snow um, oh okay it was pretty <clears throat> yeah we had some big snows recently yeah. but uh, okay i, I just sent it to you steph but <coughs> but we had, we had a couple slaps on the house and then i walked out and i and i went wow that looks like a handprint <laughs> in the snow <laughs> So, so, so this season we, we made a decision instead of getting a permit from the forest service, which was a oh humongous, humongous hassle. Um, <laughs> we decided that we would 
camp on Jill's property. Yeah. And, you know, it's a big property and the neighbors have big properties. So we're just going to camp on the back, the back 40, so to speak. Um, but we think that, um, there's a lot more chance that those who come with us will have an encounter there than if we take you out. And that's what I think you're interested in is having an encounter. Yeah. And we, you know, that big clearing, we have, have had a lot of success with that and have people outsiders getting to see them. Also, um, if we're doing horseback, we've got trails to explore and that have, Mm -hmm. um, uh, tree structures and just all kinds of stuff. And like I said, you listen for sounds. If we're doing the, just the camp trips, we, we are going to take some trails, you know, and hike them and and they're amazing. And we have some really neat, um, I don't know if we're planning on going there, but we had an area where they made arches and they wove them all in together and we'll have to go scout it out and see. I hope it's still there, but they added an arch every single night. They added like one or two arches every night that we were there. So, so just for everyone to know if, if particularly you're interested in the horseback, there's the handprint. Yeah. looks like a handprint to me. Yeah, it has a thumb and and then it has the four digits. And when I put my hand in it, my hand was tiny. It it's that's deep. I wish I had to put my hand next to it so you could see how big it is. Um, that's like a large man size hand, like you know those guys that had the giant hands. Um, and because when I put my fingers to where it stopped, I mean the palm of my hand was almost where those. Fingers you you know were. what we should yeah. have done. Um, I, I need yep. to give you some of this spray that you can use and to cast holding. things in the snow. I would love to. And we could have, we could have poured that print to see what it looked like in the yeah, negative. That would have been so cool. <clears throat> so remind me to do that when I come down next. Um, oh yeah. That's something we got too. Remember that Jim, we got all those palm prints all over my, my truck window. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we fun. did out, out in the camp. Yeah. Yeah that were bizarre looking. Um, so, uh, I see, did you, did you have something else loaded here, Steph, to show us another, there we go. Best Bigfoot museums in the USA. Oh, yay. Sasquatch outpost. Woo. Number That's one. Right. Way to go. Wow. I have not seen that. How many museums did they review? I wonder, uh, three, three, they reviewed all of them. You were number one. Three. Well, we're number oh. one of three, but oh, well. um, Bigfoot museums, because there's probably six or seven. I mean, you could call them Bigfoot museums. They're not all true museums, but um, I'll be interested to see which ones. But that is great news. I'm excited to see that. Um, I've wondered about that because ours is not the biggest by any stretch. Ours is much, much smaller than Dave Bacaras in Georgia. Um, we have a kind of a different emphasis than he does, but his is fantastic. Um, Cliff has one in Boring, Oregon. So, you know, there's there are some some bigger museums, but that that really that's really cool that they voted this number one. So, do you, do you know what um, I've always been curious about? Um, they they classify Gigantus. Pithicus. Gigantopithecus, yeah. Yeah, the Asian ape. By collecting uh, dragon's teeth that the apothecaries had in their little boxes. And they also found a partial, the three separate partial jaws that had teeth in them, right? So they they recognized an entire species. <laughs> <laughs> From a to, couple of teeth and a part of I, a jawbone. Yeah, it's like, I think it's like 23 teeth and three partial bones that were in in asia never in america they will not give sasquatch any scientific credit at all and we've got hundreds and if not thousands of footprints and and handprints and and hair and dna with the dna i don't i just don't understand yeah i don't either um but there's no there's no understanding people uh, how we think about sasquatch i mean The Bigfoot community, the Bigfoot community is one of the strangest communities I've ever been a part of in how we fight with each other and we try to discredit every, well, I guess it's kind of like politics, you know, we try to discredit what everyone else is doing so that it looks like we're the only ones that know what we're doing. 
nobody, nobody's an expert when it comes to Sasquatch. And yeah. so, um, yeah, but, um, let's just make an effort as far as we're concerned to support each other and to try and encourage sharing of information and, and, and come uh, out. Who knows what you're going to see? Yeah, You'll be yeah. able to attest to it. And I'm hoping that they that they are comfortable enough that they'll they'll you know do do everything they do here when I'm here. So yeah, no, I agree, and I think there's a good chance of that. So we only have, I think, two camping trips and three horseback trips for the whole summer. So there's there's um, more night hikes than anything else, but. Um, if you're interested, some there are people already signed up for some of the camping and the horseback expeditions. So if we only take four horseback riding at a time, we, we'll take six people camping, but only four horseback riding. So, um, And I'm excited about Booger Canyon. I, I, I hope that works out. <laughs> Booger for Canyon. There you go. We need to go check that out because the legends around here all point to Booger Canyon as far as having big hairy things. Uh, running around and terrorizing people. So the wood um, booger, the wood the booger. booger. Yeah. So, well, Jill, this has been a delight as, as always. And, uh, thank you for coming on and helping us laugh, but also <laughs> sharing some, some great info. And, uh, I think it's going to be fun this summer doing all these things on your property. It's going to be, I, hope I so. think we have the most chance of all the years we've done this of having some significant encounters for those yeah. who come with us. So yep. and, um, next week uh, we're going to have Jeff Meldrum and Daniel uh, Toth, who's the president of big, and we're going to talk about the conference, but they're also going to talk about some of the research they've been doing. So if you like the, the research that Jeff Meldrum is known for, then, then join us next week. And uh, it's going to be a, a fun interview, I think. And then the following week, uh, we will have Ronnie LeBlanc from Expedition Bigfoot. I'll interview him in Estes, and then I'll show that interview um, on the Tuesday night following that. So it should be a lot of fun. So always great to have you guys. Thanks Thank for you, all everybody. your comments and your and your questions. And... Unless I've forgotten something, until next week, keep on squatching.